Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. In this video, I'm gonna give a summary of the work we did in our project called Listed, which is an app that's gonna allow users to create, share, and watch YouTube lists of YouTube channels. Um, and we work on it on every Friday over on twitch.tv slash Coding Garden. And specifically uh, this Friday, uh, we did a few things. So first of all, I merged some pull requests that people had. So Omar, uh, 2205 made a pull request that uh, added a few more things to the issue template. So now, whenever you open an issue, uh, they added these two checkboxes that say, are you sure this issue hasn't been opened before? And are you sure uh, that you agree to the, the project's code of conduct, which is, which is pretty nice. So thanks for making that. Um, we also merged this pull request from Gabriel Forster. Uh, it's a pretty simple change to our ESLint ignore and prettier ignore, um, but they just had an issue on Linux where the linter was trying to look into the Docker data folder. So they just added that. Good to go. This was a really nice PR uh, created by, uh, again, Omar2205 uh, that added uh, GitHub actions to our repo. Uh, and we talked about... Um, how it all works. And it's actually pretty simple. So this is just a single file in our repo that says um, we're going to run this when there's a pull request on the, to the main, into the main branch. It's going to spin up a new Ubuntu machine, uh, check out the current branch, use Node.js version 16, do a clean install of dependencies, and then run the linter. Uh, so if you've never used GitHub Actions before, they're pretty simple to set up. Literally, this, this just says run the linter uh, whenever we get a pull request. Uh, and what's nice is now anytime a pull request was opened, you can if you see that green check mark, that means that the linter script passed. Uh, so big thanks to uh, Oscar. I keep calling him Omar. <laughs> Oscar for opening up this pull request. Um, because now that we've merged it in, every single PR that goes uh, to our repo, uh, it's going to run that linter first. And... Uh, as the maintainer, I can know whether or not I should even look at a PR because if the PR doesn't pass the linter um, and eventually we'll make sure that it passed the tests and also passes like a type check. Um, if it doesn't, then the, the the person that made the pull request has some work to do before I should look at it. So big thanks uh, for opening that up. Next, we implemented AuthJS uh, in our SvelteKit app. So if you're not familiar with AuthJS, it comes from the same team that created uh, NextAuth, which is authorization for NextJS. Uh, but this is a project that is uh, platform agnostic. So instead of just being for NextJS, they have an adapter for SvelteKit, an adapter for Solid, and pretty soon they'll have adapters for other uh, backend frameworks as well. So we specifically were using the SvelteKit adapter to get Auth integrated. Now, if you watched my stream like a month and a half ago, there were a couple of bugs in the library, um, specifically when integrating with SvelteKit, but most of those have been resolved. So it was pretty smooth sailing getting getting everything set up. Uh, and it's it's pretty easy. You just install the dependency and then add this to your hooks.server in your SvelteKit app. Um, in their example, they're using Google OAuth. We specifically are using uh, YouTube OAuth. So. If we look at our hooks.server, uh, we're bringing in the Google provider and uh, SvelteKit auth. And we're doing a little bit of validation on the two environment variables that we're bringing in. And then uh, we set it up. So we have our Google provider. So right now there is a bug in the library. The type definitions are not up to date. Um, it, it, it's complaining here, but the code works. So for now, we're just going to leave uh, the the TS ignores here, but eventually that'll be fixed in the library, so we won't have to ignore those. But it's pretty simple. We just add this, and then now uh, we have login with Google. Uh, one of the things you can see I'm doing here is we have actually two different uh, handlers that need to run in hooks.server, and so we also learned about the sequence function uh, from SvelteKit, and this essentially allows us to run multiple handler functions in a single hooks file, and that's kind of what we needed to do, because if you're familiar with our setup for localization, this handler detects the user's language based on the header, and that needs to run, but then this handler does all of the auth handling, uh, but we want both of them, so we import sequence from uh, SvelteKit uh, hooks, and that will run them in order, so that was important to bring in as well. So from there, it worked uh, just fine. The OAuth flow was working, uh, but we also wanted to integrate uh, Prisma to store users in our database. And AuthJS also comes with a Prisma adapter. So we installed the Prisma adapter, and then we're including that Prisma adapter um, right here. Uh, you can see that I have a little to do. Uh, eventually, once we start doing more Prisma stuff, we're going to want this in a shared file. But for now, we just defined our Prisma client there, and then we pass it in, and they actually give us the schema that we can use to 
uh, automatically uh, store sessions, accounts, and users in our database. So we essentially copied this over to our existing uh, Prisma schema, and that adds all of the tables that uh, AuthJS is expecting to exist. And now the OAuth flow automatically works and automatically inserts users into our database. So to see that in action, uh, now when you're on the homepage, with the, if you click sign up, that's going to redirect you over to Google, click your account, you get redirected back, Right now, it's super basic. We just have the name of the user, uh, and then we have a nice little sign out function. Um, but it's it's working wonderfully, and all of the uh, data is in the database. So if I run Prisma Studio, we can actually see that data in my database. You can see I have a user in there. That's that Coding Garden user. There they are. And then you can see a user, Coding Garden, also has one account, uh, which has my Google OAuth ID. So uh, it was super nice that all we had to do was add those uh, table definitions to our schema, and then uh, AuthJS automatically integrated with those. Uh, one thing I'll note about our database schema is we did make a couple of changes. Specifically for the models that we copied over from their documentation, you can see that they're using uh, CUID, which is a collision uh, tolerant uh, unique ID, uh, but we specifically are using UUIDs from within uh, that are generated by Postgres, so we did update all of those definitions on the, the models that we copied in. Uh, and then some of the other database changes we, we made, uh, we actually changed the name of the table from feed and feed item and uh, feed item meta to list item. So because the app is called listed, it made sense to, to keep calling our, our tables uh, list instead of feed. So we added this all here. Uh, and then one of the things we talked about is uh, because we're still early in development, like we actually haven't even deployed yet, it, it doesn't make sense to have multiple migrations. So we actually deleted the initial migration and now our initial migration includes all of this stuff, the user table and session table and all of the list stuff, uh, because uh, since we're early in development, we don't really need to keep track of the changes until we have a, a like a consistent database schema that we're going to be using. And then we'll actually have, uh, if, if we do need to change the database, then we'll keep track of those migrations. But for now, we actually deleted our old migration, and now we only have a single migration that creates all of those tables. And one tiny bug that still exists when you're integrating with Prisma and AuthJS is this expires at column on the account. Um, you'll notice if you look at my account, I have these expires in, and that's because the data that comes back from Google OAuth has an expires in field. Um, and with uh, next auth, which is what this is based on, they have an internal function that actually converts from expires in to expires at. Uh, there's currently an issue open on the AuthJS repo uh, in deciding on which one to use. For now, we have to use this property. Um, and uh, once we set that up, the OAuth flow works per perfectly. We can log in. We've got users in our database. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then lastly, we updated uh, some of our dependencies. So if you look at the files changed here, um, you can take a look at the package.json. We basically did a minor version bump of anything that had a more recent version. And the one thing that had uh, breaking changes was the latest version of uh, Skeleton. Uh, so if you look at their migration guide uh, and you were on an older version of Skeleton before this version, uh, there are a few changes that you need to make. So specifically, if you look in our Tailwind config, uh, we had to change how we bring in this Skeleton plugin. Uh, before, it was just requiring it. Now we invoke it and we spread it. So that fixed that. And then they had some breaking changes around the names of various classes. So uh, for instance, like on our buttons, this, this class used to be called button filled primary, but now it's called variant filled primary. So we went through, we, we updated all of the class names that changed, uh, and now everything's working, working just fine. So uh, if, you, if you follow the latest documentation on Skeleton, it has you using the latest version and, and it includes this. Um, it's just if you were on an older version, then you'd have to upgrade. That's it for the changes today. Uh, and Coding Garden is brought to you by viewers like you. So uh, if this was useful to you or any of my other content is useful for you, please consider supporting me uh, by becoming a patron, a YouTube member, a Twitch sub, a GitHub sponsor, uh, or check out some of the merch that I have uh, to offer. Um, definitely ch tune in every Friday where we're working on this same app. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one.